Hello everybody and welcome back to the Hearthstone Singapore Major. Once again, I'm TJ and I am joined by a very energetic Lothar. Yeah, well, it's evening here yeah. in Singapore and it's not that hot anymore. No, it actually feels really nice. It's cooled down once it gets dark outside. and We got some nice fans and some nice AC in here, which means I am ready to cast the last two matches of the we'll Singapore Major. We'll do it together. Major. We will do it together. So the first up is going to be, of course, the lower finals. So we just saw Cyan Half playing against Stronger, and I have to say he impressed me with his um, yeah. game, uh, game style. So good decisions overall, brilliant decision in one particular match yeah. with the uh, Fatigue Warrior against yeah. the Murder Paladin. And Waning Moon had some shaky moments, but is still a very, very good player. So let's see yeah. how he will handle Cyan. Yeah, Waning Moon I think has struggled uh, with nerves a little bit in this tournament. Um, and there you can see on your screen the final uh, lower bracket here. A lot of uh, really strong players, and we're down to just two remaining. And of course, Shiny Pants awaits the winner of this match in the finals. True. Well, and that's a small mistake because there's Shiny Pants already on the uh, screen, but that's not the correct. So it will be made correct in a few seconds. Yeah. So Indeed. both of those players are actually Singaporeans. So. Uh, these players? Yep. Uh, Wayne Moon is from the Philippines. Is he? Wait. Yeah. Okay. The just a second before they had both same dif the same flag. Yeah. Okay. Never mind then. My bad. Yeah. Cyan Half is from Singapore and Wayne Moon is from the Philippines. And Shiny Pants, I think, is from Singapore. I don't want to lie anymore. Yeah. Uh, but if he is, then we have a potential full Singapore finals, which I'm sure a lot of the home crowd would enjoy that. Definitely. Uh, but we'll have to get confirmation that Shiny Pants is actually from here. So. Uh, well, we are going to jump into the first match, or the first game of the Losers Finals. So, Zoo versus Secret Paladin. Yes. Which kind of favors slightly Zoo, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Slightly. Unless there will be a really good opening hand for winning one. So, yeah. mini board, Massive Battle, a Blessing of Kings into Belcher or Lotep into Mrs. Challenger into Dr. Boom mm -hmm. into Tyrion. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like nightmare for everyone. Yeah. They're both board control decks. So that means uh, the class with the strongest board control tools, usually Zoo, come out on top. Mm -hmm. No free drop for Waning Moon, so very important for Cyan to see that. That's like a, like a huge relief for him. Use the Sergeant. Perfect opener now the hits. Ah. Oh. But still one more chance. Oh. oh, too bad. Yeah. Oh, and now that that's actually huge. Blessing of Kings of Keeper of Wolderman. I think Blessing of Kings, right? Blessing of King kills the knife juggler and then trades for the abuse of surgeon. So it's still like a two for two. Actually, it's like a two for one and a half because the hero yeah. power was used instead of a one one minion from hand. True. And then Keeper of Wolderman would you know, trade for the Knife Juggler, and then the Keeper of Oldman will left around, and it's an unfavorable trade into the Nerubian. There's also some merit to just killing the Abusive Sergeant and then plopping down the Pilot of Shredder. Yeah, well that's always good, because um, there's a small chance the Pilot of Shredder will get popped before he trades with anything, because yeah. there's three juggles that need to be made. Mm -hmm. So unless there's a implosion in hand from Cyan, yeah. Pilot of Shredder is also an option. Yeah. Now, what are the chances of having an implosion? Pretty three cards remaining. Yeah. Before going into next turn with the draw, so. That's a tricky situation. I think the mathematically best play is Blessing of Kings, but uh, Pilot of Shredder, if you can make the read that your opponent doesn't have Implosion, works out. And we can see that Cyan Half does not have Implosion, but he does have quite a few low drops, and he's going to get two juggles from each of these. And now this will be, oh my. All right. Two chances to hit, hit the Pile to Shutter. Now let's see, will it happen? Free damage to the face and it is. Gets it. And can clear off the Garrison Commander. So Sign Half has full control over this game. And That's a huge problem. Yeah. Double juggles? Ooh. And yeah. the Hunted Creeper already yeah. on board? That's four juggles yeah. just from the board state, not even counting the minions that we played from the hand. Yeah. And the PO. So, you can actually use the PO if you want to do it right now on the Hunted Creeper. 
and get the minions at the end of the turn, so guarantee those dragons to go to the, uh, will go to the face. Yeah. This is going to be so much face damage, regardless of how he decides to trade this. Uh, at least six damage is going to face from the juggles, and a little bit more when you factor in the M gang boss. Oh, that's interesting that he tapped last. Yeah. That would change a lot. Because if you would have the Abyssal Sergeant in his hand, yeah. he could have played that on the Flame Imp, trade, then use the uh, whatever minion to just yeah. kill the remains of, uh, remains of the slime and go face. So he wouldn't be pushed to use the Hunted Creeper as a trade. Yeah. Unless he wanted to play the Abyssal Sergeant on the Hunted Creeper and trade it uh, yeah. anyway. So a slight misplay from Cyan. But he still has a burst in his hand, which is 6 damage. And Paladin is at 11, so it's like, uh, you know, I probably already, already die, so... I think this is just game, no matter how you swing it. Yep. Uh, even just on board, there's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 damage on board. The only way he get Cog Hammer is if he hero powers and then Cog Hammers, in which case he could take out Knife Juggler. Yeah, it's, he's mathematically dead no matter what he does. And uh, good manners by Waning Moon. Before he concedes, he throws out the well-played. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Like, really wow. Yeah. Completely not like an NA. <laughs> yeah. Which is funny, Winnie Moon plays on the uh, NA ladder. Ooh. Yeah. The, <laughs> the, pl the plot thickens. The plot thickens. So that was a really fast game. It was uh, like five minutes? Maybe not even. It was 10 5 from Warlock. I don't even remember that game. What game? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's 1 0. Oh. Well, Cyan Half does have that 1 0 lead, and. Uh, I his Warrior's Band. I really like that Warrior deck that we saw in the last series. True. What was it that great against the lineup from Waning Moon? Oh, uh, he has a Merle Paladin as well, right? Uh, no, he's a Seeker Paladin. Uh, mm. Yeah. Right. So never mind. He probably just doesn't want to play against it. A lot of pl players just don't like Warriors. And maybe there's just not like a really good ban other than Druid. But I would like always to ban Druid, so yeah, I'm but kind of biased. He does have Zoo. Winning Moon does have Zoo and Patron. And, mm -hmm. and Secret Paladin, so his lineup actually is sort of built to do reasonably well against Druid. And uh, to get this far in, in the tournament, you have to have a decent lineup against Druid regardless, unless you're planning to ban it every True. game. So, a decent opener for Winning Moon. Uh, he's on the coin, so he can play Dark Peddler at turn 1, then Argent Squire into Abuse of Surgeon or use the other 1-drop that he got from the Peddler, which is not bad. And it's, uh, but it's worse against mini bots. But it's better against knife juggles. But at the same, so, uh, at the same, <coughs> sorry, uh, at the same, at the same time, Argent Squire is better against every single scenario. So yeah, definitely Argent Squire in one. Quick analysis. So I wasn't sure which was the best. I think I think you you're spot on. Haunted Creeper though. It's not the best side to behold. But then you have a Imp Gang boss on turn 2, which is awesome against creatures like Hunted Creeper. Yeah, it's funny. This is just like the opposite matchup. It was Secret Paladin versus the last game. This game is Secret Paladin versus Zoo. So. Turn 3 has to be massive battle, even though you play directly into the um, Imp Gang boss, which is not perfect. Yeah. Next turn, at least you have Keeper of Ultimate to maybe turn those 1-1s one into a 3-3 three three to trade up into the Imp Gang boss. Mm -hmm. It is important. So, good for him. <laughs> good for him! Dark Peddler into Mortal Coil. Oh, <laughs> he almost like insta-hit the Sir Finley Murgleton. But all of those are terrible. Because you don't really want to give up Life Tap. Uh, yeah. Grimscale Oracle is effectively a 1-1 one because one there's no Murlocs. So Kogamas is like the best option here. But then I don't think he plays any mechs apart from the Pulse Shredder. Enhance Home Mechano. Oh, right. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wind Fury on it. <laughs> there you go. Wing Moon loves to swirl his mouse vigorously. Keeper of Ulderman. On the Hunted Creeper? No, I'm kind of surprised. Yeah. It just, uh, it... I guess it, it sort of incentivizes trading into it. But at the same time, you decrease the amount of damage, because 
Hunter Crew would trade here anyway with a 1-1. Yeah. So you put two two minions on board, but it plays around Sea Giant, so maybe that's the idea. Sure, yeah. No way to deal with Sea Giant in the hand for Cyan Half, so... He's been playing pretty meticulously, I'd say. This is not a very good hand for Waning Moon. Uh, he does have Lothep next turn and possibly can push out a Sea Giant, but... If he wants to fill up his mana curve here, he has to give up both of his... Or the two activators for his egg that he has available uh, to him. I don't like that. I really don't like that. That he bo be plays both of them. Oh, definitely not trained. No. You give up both of your surgeons now. There is a, um, a light justice, so maybe he figured in his head, like, oh, they'd die anyway. But they were actually not dying if you're not trading with the free yeah, one, right? So it's kind of sad. All right, well, Cyanap, look what he picked up in that last turn. A nice, a good old mysterious challenger. And Wayne Moon has both Sea Giants. That's not what you want to see. And the live, <laughs> sorry, the, the low tip effect is like, yeah, I don't care. I just play a 6-6 six, six minion, on 6 Yeah. And get five spells anyway. So I just played 25 worth of mana. Yeah. Even more, 29. Yeah. Well, you can play Arden Square into a Sea Giant. That's not bad. Actually, you can attack first with the low tab. Get one more minion on the board. Because of redemption. Yeah. And then you can fit in a tap. I don't know if you want to do that. Wait, I mean no, you can play both sea giants. Uh, right? No, 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 no. You, you can't. Because it will be for four mana. So it will be for three mana. And you'll have only two mana remaining. So you... you were oh No, because uh, he gets an extra one. So it multiplies. Oh, yeah, right. What yeah. I'm talking about. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like... Decreasing it by one when it should be by two. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you're correct. The second one is by two. So that's... How much damage is that? That's a lot. 12 plus 7, 19, 20. 20 damage. What does he pick up? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Well, I think you just plop down the Mysterious Challenger, plop down the Noble... Ooh, Okay. I'm kind of surprised by that. Noble Sacrifice looks really nice here. Yeah. You're going to... I mean, I guess it only eats up a, an attack from the... No, you, you kill the Argent Squire. Because you can... Um, you can kill it with the 3-2 and I the attack from the weapon. I think you just slam face. Yeah, but... What with I mean, everything. You set up lethal anyway with the 7-7 seven, seven and the 5-4. Gotcha. Four. I see. So I you see. can kill the Argent Squire and get a... You know, just a protection... By yeah. the noble sacrifice this turn, right? All right. Well, I don't think Waning Moon has a way out of this. Does this help? No. He just can't get through the Belcher. He has to spend two attacks to get through the Belcher, and then something gets avenged. And you know, even if he does, he he still leaves something up. Dark Peddler. I mean, if he picks up a Taunt, maybe. Uh, mm. Soulfire is effectively the same because he can empty his yeah. hand. So Soulfire is better than the Void Walker. I still don't think he can do it. Well, you still die. It doesn't yeah. matter what you do. You kill the five forward, but then it's th there's the Belcher. You kill one of the six six. Ooh, he does he think it's Noble Sacrifice? Okay. He did think it was Noble Sacrifice. That's why he didn't play the Noble Sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Bluffed it. Nice bluff. Yeah. Look at Cyanav's face. He's just like, come on, just let me win already. Secret Keeper getting buffed. Soul Fire getting kicked. And that's still 10 damage remaining. Alright, well played again, and that's a concede. Cyanav is one game away from making it to the Grand Finals. That is blazing fast. Yeah. Like, blazing fast. Com compared to the last couple matches, oh man. Yep. Turn 6, and says Challenger. GG. Well, it's been it's been a long day, and it's been a long weekend for the players, too. And not only weekend day, already started on Friday. Yeah, we started on Friday. So, uh, and these players, they, they had to play through the full, you know, round of 256, round of 128, um, and round of 64 on uh, Friday. And then yesterday, they had to play through all those winner's bracket and loser bracket. And now today, after a grueling, like, 10-hour day, we finally arrived at the last couple of matches. Sorry for um, interrupting you. but Giggling. Yeah, I'm like, 
Love. Always when I see double innovate, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Lothar giggle. It needs to be an emote. Hmm. So the, I mean, if he draws an emperor, emperor turn one, seems nice. Seems nice, yeah. This hand just seems nice regardless. Because you can innervate out a Keeper of the Grove. You can also just coin out Darnassus on turn one, which is not bad. Yeah. Hunted Creeper. That probably will get played before the Knife Juggler. Uh, yeah, I will just play the Darnassus here. Yeah, There's coin no Darnassus. chance to get killed, so... Yeah, and the next turn you have the option of either playing... Um, Keeper is just amazing here. Silence these Hunted Creeper. Or you could just intervene out a Druid of the Claw. How is he going to deal with that? That's actually a good point. Or even this. Oh, double Innervate Ancient of War. Then you have 4 mana next turn, so you can play a Keeper. And then you have a 5 mana for the Druid of the Claw. Perfect curve. Curve. Sorry. Wow. You got to go. F oh. Aww. No balls. No balls. Do damage to the face. Noble Sacrifice will help a little here. Because you can knife juggler into Noble Sacrifice. Which is really strong. It's a strong effect. Not only do you block the attack, you also get the extra juggle. And you will get two juggles from the Hunted Creeper right now. Because if you want to play the Hunted Creeper, you need to play the knife juggler. Mm -hmm. So knife juggler into Noble Sacrifice, into Sacrifice... Um, <laughs> into the attack from the Creeper, which gets you two knives, which can land on the Darnassus Aspirant, which then can be killed by the dagger from the Noble Sacrifice. So that's yeah. like the dream scenario, which is probably not going to happen, especially when there's a Keeper just waiting mm -hmm. for the Knife Juggler to appear. Yeah. But everything, ev everything seems to be like really awkward for Waning Moon. Nothing pops as the best play. Cockhammer might be as well, it's like, you know, just play it and hope your opponent will just destroy it. But then Keeper of the Grove is the same problem as uh, against the uh, Knife Juggler. Oh, wow. And he even makes the attack. That's so much damage that he's going to take just from this Druid of the Claw alone. Yep. What, is he going to attack it three times? This plays around Keeper a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit. But it doesn't necessarily help as much. Yeah. Oh, look, the Druid has a secret. Oh. His secret is that he has a second innervate. It's even it, it even matches the color of his skin. Yeah, it, it is. Alfurion has purple skin. All right, well, this game's starting to snowball out of control, and Waning Moon might not even be able to make it until turn six, where you can play the Mysterious Challenger. Definitely. With the second innervate into Ancient of Law, into a Savage Roar? Sure. Uproot or Riot? That's all I'm saying, Lothar. You mean that you favor an Ancient of War in the form of a big, ugly monster? Instead of an Ancient of Lord to draw two cards? Yep. That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. Cyan Half seems like the kind of person that would do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, he didn't have the, you know, metaphoric balls for the turn three Ancient of War. Because he was saving it for the Uproot. Oh, he nails the juggle. Okay, now Uproot's bad. Yeah, now it's bad. That yeah. Really bad. But that was that was Winning Moon's like only opportunity there to find a window to come back in this game. The thing is, he's at 16 life. That's like dead. <laughs> it's effectively dead against a druid. <laughs> <laughs> so innovate engine of war, then trade with the keeper of the grove, deal two damage to the face. Ah. Oh. I was secretly hoping. All right, now he's at 14. Essentially dead. Pack it up. Yeah. GG, nothing to see here. Yeah. And Druid has come. Yeah, this is going to be really tough for Winning Moon to deal with. He's going to the motions, trying to find the best player. In these types of situations, when it, it feels like it's hopeless and you're down 2-0, you just sort of have to calm yourself and make the best play possible for the situation and hope that something miraculous happens. Hope that your opponent makes a mistake. <laughs> hope that they get greedy. He gets disconnected. He gets, yeah. That's actually a valid strategy because Hartson has, you know, problems with that. <laughs> <laughs> True. True that. 
All right. Five damage to the face, seven left. Well, and now four. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just so sad to see that. Yeah. That was like the fastest loser's bracket final I have ever seen. Yeah. Well, you can get a... I don't know what you can get from the Palter Shredder. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. Uh, you can get a Taunt, uh, and Annoyer Tron would buy you one more turn. Well, that's a land, land Carrier. Yeah. At least the the stats are true, but uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, well, Cyanhaf is fast. going to take the series and secure his spot in the Grand Finals against Shiny Pants. Unfortunately, that means Wayne Moon has been eliminated, but... Uh, third place finish is definitely nothing to be disappointed about. Definitely not. In a, such a huge tournament like this, almost uh, 200 players yeah. spread out within three days, and he got third place. Yeah. So five points, and if I'm not mistaken, $500? $500, that is correct. And also, you oh know, yeah. on your Hearthstone tournament resume, you can put that you had a third place finish in a, in a major tournament, in a yeah. major open, which is... A big deal, uh, especially for a player like Waning Moon, who's been around the competitive scene for a long time. True that. True that. <laughs> like slinging now some slang. <laughs> yes. <laughs> slinging some slang. Lothar, 2016. <laughs> uh, well, that's about with it, right? Yeah. We have one match left, yeah. and that will be the grand final of the first official major for Hudson here in Singapore in the Southeast Asia region, yeah. which will be between... Shiny Pants... And sign half. You can see it on your screen there. So the grand final is set. We're going to have to go to a quick break to give sign half a chance to reset before we jump into that final. But don't go anywhere, guys. The exciting conclusion to the Singapore Major will continue right after this. Seems good. <laughs> 